In One Piece community, there are three topics the community will go back to constantly, and they are Mihawk vs Shanks, Sanji vs Zoro, and the Yonko vs the Admirals. So as you can see by the title and thumbnail, I'm gonna go over the last one and cover the Yonko vs the Admirals. So strap in because I'm gonna go real in depth with this video. But before I get into this video, if you guys like this type of content, you guys know what to do, hit that like button and subscribe. As I do put out content like this regularly, and it's a win-win. You guys show support and I'll give it back to you in videos. Whether it's one piece of anime or just fiction in general, in due time I'm gonna cover it, so be there when I go there. Anyway, I think that's enough of the rambling out of me. Let's get into the video and talk about the Yonko versus the Admirals and truly find out which one is stronger. Right, so before I actually delve headfirst into the video, I'm gonna set some rules so you guys know what I'm judging everything by. The rules in this video are very basic, there's nothing too complicated. The first rule is just going to be I'm using every Admiral and every Yonko that's ever existed and I'm going to be putting them in their prime forms. When I say prime forms, I don't mean their future prime forms. If they've had a prime in the past, I'm going to be putting them in that. That's basically it. There's nothing like too big or grandiose about it. I won't be including Garp in this video since he was never actually an Admiral and I won't be including Buggy because, well, he doesn't fight. And I'm not going to include Mihawk here because Mihawk is his own entity so without further ado let's get straight into the video now to start this video off out of the two of them i'm going to start with the yonko as i have covered both of them pretty frequently on this channel but i thought i'd start with the yonko today and so to start this section off i want to start off with big mom now as i've said multiple times on this channel by now big mom is somebody that you just have to look at her and see what she's doing on that exact day on one day she can be looking like thanos the next day she can be looking like an idiot like she did on wano big mom's like a massive coin flip like she does have the potential to be one of the strongest but she doesn't really use it from what we've seen on screen and so when you look at her as a whole you're like oh okay i see how it is as we saw against kid and law she does have the minerals to stay in there but she just doesn't like have the brains to really keep up with the rest of them and that is probably her biggest flaw in this video and i'll say probably even out of like every top tier in the verse she's probably the one with the lowest iq in general and like i don't know it's just something about her that just irks me to the fact where it's like why are you the dumbest out of everyone but yeah big mom is somebody that is very strong but is held back by her iq and that's really just all i have to say for her there isn't anything else i can really delve into i mean we all know about her devil fruit and how her devil fruit is really busted where she's taking souls powering herself up healing herself she does have like i guess all forms of haki since she does use advanced conqueror's haki i'm assuming her observation has to be at least really good at the base level and to be able to use advanced conqueror's haki you need to know how to also use rio or just advanced arm and haki so yeah she does have advanced arm and haki as well but yeah as i've said big mom out the yonko is probably like the most flippy floppy it just depends how she shows up on the day whether she can be one of the strongest or just basically an idiot and so with that i want to segue into blackbeard now blackbeard is a weird one as we do know that he's got Going to be strong but as of right now he's very flippy floppy like he can be very strong but i know how the community view his strength is a bit like oh we just have to wait on the narrative for it to kick in but i do think that blackbeard is pretty strong as it is right now we don't know about blackbeard's full haki situation as it's not really like disclosed much we don't know if he has conqueror's haki we don't know if he has future side we don't know if he has advanced armament but what we do know is that he has two busted devil fruits and he has an admiral under him so i'm assuming that his strength is something to be feared. Out of the Yonko, you could argue that he does have the weakest feet since all of them have done something against the top tier. Like, even Big Mom has fought Kaido for three days. As so I feel like people are just waiting for him to fight a top tier so they can give him the respect that he deserves. But as we know in the future, we know who he's going to fight and we know what's going to be the outcome. So, don't worry, don't worry, just give it some time. And so, moving on to one of Blackbeard's future opponents, why don't we talk about Luffy? And so, unlike the last two, we have Luffy who is very impressive. And Luffy, even in his base form, is pretty good as well. And you you could argue him to be above many first commanders. As we all know, Luffy fought Kaido and he did beat him, so obviously that is a very good feat as Kaido does have some of the best feats in the series. And recently he has fought an admiral to I'd say a stalemate. Their match was pretty pointless, but it nobody really won in that scenario. If somebody told you that one of them won, I'm not gonna lie to you, they're kinda just on an agenda and they wanna push their side. But yeah, for the most part, Luffy is pretty impressive as he is somebody that has boxed with a Yonko in his base in his second gear in his third gear in his fourth gear and in his fifth gear he has all hockey taps unlocked he has his devil fruit awakened like he is somebody that is fierce and he's gonna be a problem for anybody he runs into 
I believe that Luffy's hockey proficiency and everything is up there. The only thing that's lacking in my eyes is just his stamina. If he had better stamina, he'd win a lot more fights and he'd be up there in a lot more tier list. But Luffy is somebody that suffers from his stamina issue because gear 5 does drain him quickly. But I mean, look, listen, he still is able to do a lot of things. And especially with the new chapters being released, he's able to use gear 4 in his base. Like that is something that is like, it's ludicrous. Remember, gear 4 was contesting with Kaido. So... I mean, look, listen, it's something that we have to look out for when it comes to Luffy. His overall mastery of his devil through his haki and everything is something that we have to look out for in the future. And I'm telling you right now, he is extremely strong. And so moving on from him, why don't we talk about that guy that he defeated and that's Kaido. Now, Kaido is extremely strong and his strength is self-explanatory. I mean, it's on panel, like all of his feats are there, but I'm still going to explain it to you guys so you guys can really grasp how strong this guy is. Everyone on the island that had a vendetta against Kaido fought him and he came out on top. Now, although he did lose to Gear 5 Luffy, that was after how many times he defeated Luffy and lifting up an island and doing just everything that he could. Even after he defeated Gear 4 Luffy, he went down to go fight everybody else and was ready to scrap. Like, he is somebody that has a lot of endurance, his AP is great, and just overall, as a person, he's just strong. Like, there isn't anything weak about the guy. There are even arguments to be made that him lifting up the island of Onigashima took away from his fight against Gear 5 Luffy. So you could say that if Kaido was able to fight Gear 5 Luffy without lifting up Onigashima for like the whole entire raid, then he would have done better against him. And he does have all three Haki types on lock. So yeah, Kaido is just a beast. Moving on to somebody that was on Kaido's list, let's talk about Shanks. As we know, Shanks was on Kaido's list, one shot a kid and was able to paralyze an admiral with his conquest Haki from very far away. I don't really need to go on a long tangent for Shanks, but yeah, Shanks is somebody that is really strong and everybody obviously respects his strength. Another thing I want to mention here that I found pretty like funny was the fact that he learned Divine Departure just by seeing Roger do it once and it's probably against Oden. So, I mean, like, listen, he's somebody that can learn things with just his memory alone. Like, that is prodigy type vibes. Like, that is something that you want to look out for as well. All in all, he's just viewed as the baby Roger of this era. I mean, look, listen, selling an admiral with his your conquest Haki alone is crazy. And I will say that there is context behind it and I will get into that in the admiral section. But yeah, for the most part, he is just a baby Roger and it's like, you can't really like fault that. And so last but certainly not least, we have Whitebeard. So as I stated in the rules section, yes, this is a prime Whitebeard. So you know what that means. This is the world's strongest man. I know that people want to say that Roger was stronger. No, he wasn't. He never, no, never. Whitebeard didn't even use his devil fruit against him. Let's not go there. I mean, we can make a video on that if you guys want to, you know, listen. We, I can make the harsh truth about Whitebeard versus Roger, but this isn't the video for that. And even in his old age while he was sick, he was able to contend with an admiral. And it's like, when you view it like that, you're like, okay, even in his old sick age, he's able to contest with an admiral that is on this list. So, yeah, Whitebeard is definitely someone you want to look out for. And so, with that being said, why don't I segue into the admiral section and talk about how strong they are? And so to start off this section, I want to start off with Green Bull and Fujitora. Now out of the two of them, you could say that Green Bull has the worst showing as the Shanks situation does kind of like blur everything about his character, but I really want to talk about that right now. Now before I get started, don't get me wrong, that nigga Green Bull's a bum, but like you gotta really assess the situation and see where he was coming from with it. His statement was he doesn't want to fight the Redhead Pirates right now, knowing that there is another Yonko crew on the island, although they're healing, it's still a Yonko crew, and then you got Kid and Lord there, and then you got the Scabbers, and then you got Shanks. I don't think he wants to fight all those people at once. Like, he's just one man, he's not fighting all those people. But if you remove that from his record, I mean, there isn't really much for me to say about him. I just know that he does have advanced arm and hockey. I don't know if he has future side, but I do know that he should at least have advanced arm and hockey. And with everything else surrounding him and his devil fruit, his devil fruit is really busted. And I think a lot of people do downplay it. Aside from him being able to revive himself constantly, he should be able to spawn poisonous plants, do all these different things with his trees, and if he's able to grow his trees everywhere, then you're kind of just in his domain. It's like, when he's able to fully use his forest, you're kind of like in his domain expansion. With the Admiral, since they're so tricky to defeat because of their quirky little devil fruits, I like to set rules for them to how you can beat them. And my rule for Green Bull is, unless you can one-shot him straight away, like out of the gate, 
or you can burn this forest down, you're going to be in there for the long fight and you may lose. He can also take all the nutrients out of your body if he wants to. There are a lot of things that he can do that a lot of people don't factor in when they talk about him. And I think that's mainly due to just not liking him. But yeah, his devil fruit is extremely tricky to get around. And for his partner Fujitora, well Fujitora is very self-explanatory. He hasn't really been able to go without on page, but as I like to say for Fujitora, if he wants to, hey look, listen, the whole world's gonna blow up because he's gonna come kamikaze himself and drop the moon on them. He can also do what he did to Zoro on you and there's just a lot of things that this guy can do that's just like, you that you literally like, these admirals, if they're able to really use their powers, you don't want to fight them on a bad day, like I'm sorry. But moving on from the gravity user, I want to talk about the light user, Kizaru. Now we've seen Kizaru fight Yonko and we've seen how that fight turned out. Kizaru was mentally nerfed, it doesn't matter what you want to say, it's on panel, it literally is stated at the end of the arc that he was mentally nerfed and he was upset the whole entire time. So now when you look back on his performance, you have to say, well, I mean, look, he did pretty well because first of all, his objective was not to fight Straw Hat Luffy. It was to kill Vegapunk and what did he do? He got the job done, but it was obviously after many trips and falls. Yes, Luffy didn't use his advanced conquest haki, but Kizaru definitely wasn't going all out against him, so it kind of neutralized each other out. And when you look at the outcome, it's like, I mean, look, look, listen, Kizaru did do well and for somebody that is meant to be weaker than Luffy, I mean, look, he did a good job. Another person he did fight was Rayleigh, and yes, he did do well against Rayleigh as well. He was basically tiring Rayleigh out and was going to beat him if the fight did go on. In most of the fights that we've seen Kizaru in, it's just like the other opponent keeps gassing out or is about to gas out and he's just there like, okay, cool, let's keep fighting. Like, I feel like that's a way to portray his endurance and portray how long he can go for. But another thing I do want to focus on is how broken his Devil Fruit could be. Already we know how he manipulates light and he's able to speed even past light because he's able to just blitz Nate Man Luffy, somebody that even Kaido for a moment was having a little bit of trouble against. It's like when you look at his full bag, it's like yo, you can do a lot. And especially with those like Kizaru clones that he can make and whatnot, that guy he he's got a deep bag. We also know that he does possess advanced armament hockey and he should be able to use future side. I mean, if he can't use future side, then his whole speed gimmick is kinda useless. But I do think he did use it against Wybin and Marineford and so yeah, he is somebody that I think the community does rate properly but I do see a little bit of downplay from him. And so moving on from him, we're going to move on to Kuzan and Sakazuki. Now the reason is obvious why I put these two together, I mean they fought and they was basically an extreme death fight and so one of them is just barely stronger than the other so I might as well just group them both together. And what's so special about these two is that these two fight two legends from the old gen that used to fight with Roger and they did really well. Yes you could say Sakazuki did fight a white beard that was sick but I mean look listen it's still white beard at the end of the day. And then you have Kuzan who fought Garp and let's be real here, Kuzan was mentally nerfed as well. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that argument, but that is the case. He was mentally nerfed. And so when you look at them and even Kizaru as well, you're like, okay, so these guys are consistently shown to go up against the old legends and come out on top. And this is a way of betrayal. And even Oda himself says, nah, look, listen, I want to hype up the old men. And so when you view it, you're like, okay, the only legends that are left in the world kind of did get sunned by the admirals and this is something that you have to look at and be like okay so we have to give them the respect where it's due and i think that's something that a lot of people do forget when they talk about this argument about like oh how strong are the admirals and whatnot is because like they are shown to take on these old greats and come out on top or just come out looking like the better man although you want to say oh but kuzon was getting thrashed bro he was mentally nerfed and he was staying up every single time like gut was going all out let's be real here he did say at the beginning like don't hold back like like, this is something that I do, like, I don't hold back. And then when you look at the Devil Fruits as well, like, Kuzan's Devil Fruit is broken, like, he can completely freeze you down to the bone and shatter you or just do whatever he wants to you. They'll, these two can cause permanent damage to an island if need be as well. Like, these two are busted and we do know that both of them do have future sight and they do have advanced armament hockey. So yeah, these two animals are definitely some of the more fiercer people in the One Piece verse. And so last but not least, we have Sengoku. And as I said before, this is going to be Prime Sengoku. And this is the exact same Sengoku that Roger was calling out for. The exact same when he was calling Garp out, he was calling Sengoku out. I feel like when it comes to the admiral strength, the community tends to dance around Sengoku and only talk about Garp. But like Sengoku is right there and he is somebody that Garp respected. 
Roger respected and so why wouldn't the community respect them as well? As we know Sengoku does have conquest haki, he does have observation and armament haki and obviously he has his busted devil fruit. With his devil fruit being able to create many white beards, shock waves, like I don't know what there is even really to say about Sengoku, like there isn't anything bad about him, he's just a very tight person, like there isn't anything for me to poke holes at. And even in his old age he should be pretty strong, having that devil fruit and probably having advanced conquest haki, not probably, he definitely did have advanced conquest haki to back you up that is something that obviously not a lot of people can have and i do believe that is probably one way he could be stronger than go up even now and so with that being said i now want to segue into the debate and see which one is truly stronger is it the yadmurals or is it the yonkos now in the past I've been in between both of these a lot but now I can really come to the conclusion and just say that the Yonko are stronger but the Admirals aren't too far behind and we do need to just erase the whole thought process of any like commander out there right now aside from Mihawk of course because Mihawk is a special case but aside from him and I mean Kuzan but he's an Admiral you get what I'm saying but aside from those two there isn't a single like first commander second commander I don't care what type of commander, they're not, they're not touching the admirals, like, when it really gets down to it, they're not touching the admirals, and that's something that we do need to just get out of this community, that's like, that's like a toxic thing that we do need to just eradicate. The whole Ben Beckman versus Kizaru thing, the whole Marco versus Kizaru thing, it's all played out and it's all just long, like, we see what happened when they're in front of his face, they don't do anything, Ben Beckman didn't shoot a single shot at Kizaru. Marco didn't damage Kizaru, he didn't, they didn't do anything, they don't do anything, like there isn't anything for for us to even debate here when it comes to those two things, but I do believe when you argue against the Yonko, I do believe that both of them can be on equal footing, as we've seen, the fleet admirals, and I, I've said this for ever, the fleet admirals are 100% Yonko level, there isn't anything to, like, there, there's no debate here, there's nothing to, like, be said, we've seen this even with I mean, like, I don't like using bounties to scale. We've seen this with Sakazuki's new bounty reveal. Technically, he's a 5 billion berry bounty person. And who else had that? Whitebeard and Roger. Those are the only two young cores ever to have it. Not even Shanks has topped that yet. Not even Kaido and Big Mom have gotten that yet. So it's kind of like, when you view it like that, you're like, okay, well, we have to give them respect. And Roger, the man that everybody worships, he was calling out for Sengoku, by the way. He wasn't just only calling out for Garb, it was Sengoku as well. Like the whole admiral or two admirals need to take out one Yonko. Like let, we're not doing that here. Like we're not we're not doing that here. That, that doesn't run here. Like okay, one admiral like I don't know, a little extra on the side, like a little extra source on the side. Then yeah, maybe like that. That is something that is more plausible. Like Kizaru trying to take on Kaido. I think if he had like himself and then I don't know, Kobe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he'll be able to defeat Kaido. Like I don't know, maybe that extra, that last extra punch from Kobe can do the job, but. There isn't anything like that. Like people like to make this whole thing where the gap between them is huge, like a Grand Canyon, and no, no, no. People need to understand that the strength of all these characters are very, very close. As we've seen in the story, the strength between the admirals and like proper Yonko commanders are, it is different. Exact same way we saw it with the Yonko. And his first commander or like whatever commander type characters we've seen it these two categories are up there they're not in that sort of bracket they're, they're two separate realms so yeah that's just something i want people to remember when talking about this debate but yeah the yonkos are stronger than the admirals but it's not a massive gap and people like sakazuki and, and kuzan i'd say as well they even cross into that realm of like yonko tier status but i, I mean if I talk about how I view Yonko to his status and everything, I mean, I think it's a bunch of baloney. That's why I, that's why I don't use First Commander, the the title First Commander. I could make a whole video on that as well if you guys want to like, listen. But yeah, um, I think that's the end of the video. I mean, there's nothing more for me to say unless you guys want me to go on a tangent for like 20 minutes. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And yeah, goodbye.